Hey guys, so I am just gonna finish this row and then, uh, and then we can talk. Hey guys, so it's been a couple of weeks since we've had like a proper sit down and catch up and chat about things that I'm making and stuff that's going on at Sweet Georgia and so that's what I wanted to do today. It's gonna be a little bit of a chat. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about how important it is to take time to make things. So I talk about the fiber arts. I talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing and all of the in-between and going from one to the other and all of those kinds of things. So what I wanted to talk about today was, you know, things that I'm working on, things that I have planned, things that I'm thinking about working on, those kinds of things, and also a couple of things that um, might be sort of good last minute gift ideas as well. I had, let me start off with this first one. So basically I had a couple of weeks ago uh, conversations with uh, Kara and Stephanie over at the Knitter's Planner. And so we did a podcast episode a couple of weeks ago. So you can find that on Spotify or on the Apple Store. We do the Sweet Georgia Show, our audio podcast. And so we did a podcast about this Knitter's Planner. So I had this whole conversation with Kara and Stephanie, and I had not yet seen one of the planners in person. Um, they did give me the opportunity to order a planner from them, and so I got it for free. And uh, so I'll show you what I actually picked up. So you guys may know that a couple of weeks ago I did go with my family to Hawaii. We took sort of like this quick little trip uh, just to get away. I, 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 I don't do great in the grayness and the coldness and the wetness that happens uh, in Vancouver. It's a very long period of coldness and wetness. <laughs> and so it's become sort of a thing for me that I really, really, really want to get a little bit of a dose of sunshine before we head off into December. And so this year we were able to make it happen. And so we went to Hawaii, it was wonderful, and uh, I got to spend the time with my family and it, it, it was great. Uh, however, while I was away, the Knitter's Planner arrived and I was not there to receive it. And so I had to go out to the FedEx place to go get it. So I'm just gonna open it up here because I haven't actually seen it yet. So the thing that drew me to this Knitter's Planner was the ability to customize um, the different covers, to, to customize the insides. So this is the planner that I received. So you can pick whichever kind of cover you want. There's a bunch of different kinds of covers. Um, and then you also, the key thing here with this Knitter's Planner is that you get to customize the inside. So that's what I was most excited about because like I said before, I have been uh, working with a bullet journal for the past couple of years now. I've kind of got it down to a system. I have like this particular kind of spread that I draw every single time, every week, and it's a vertical spread. So I see all of the days in a vertical format. And so the Knitter's Planner comes with a dot journal style insert, like inside pages if you want dot journal style. But since I already have a bullet journal, I'm just gonna use that. But uh, they do have um, the ability for you to create sort of these vertical columns for your weeks. So I selected that and you get to also pick if you want a Sunday start or if you want a Monday start, which is also really cool that you get to do all these customizations. So I always start with Monday because I feel like that's the beginning of the week and then I put my two weekend days together. So Saturday and Sunday are together and starts on Monday. And uh, I guess it's got like a couple of three dots here at the top where you could basically enter in your intentions for the day. This is the most important things that need to get done this day, or maybe their birthdays that you need to record, maybe their all day events that you need to record. And then the rest of it is basically from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. So there's little times that you can enter one line at a time, you know, what's on your schedule. There's personal to-do list, knitting to-do list, shopping list, notes that kind of thing. So that is basically your week by week journal. And it looks like there's all the different months. They also have your whole month spread is already written out. I know that I sit there and I draw my monthly spread, which looks like this. And my husband's always like, you know there are people who sell planners that already have all this stuff pre-printed, right? And I'm like, I know, but I'm drawing it exactly the way that I want it to be. So this is basically how I would draw it anyways. So that's very handy. And then coming to the back of the book, then after December, we have patterns. So it looks like 
The Knitter's Planner has a whole bunch of designers in here who have contributed patterns and projects. So inside here there's the Good Fortune Cowl by Francois Danois, and that's really lovely. There's a shawl by Megan Jones. That's also really lovely. These are really great, cute little patterns. Here's a pattern by Angela Tong, her retro kerchief and mitts. So these are all really great. And so here in the back, if you're looking at what uh, you might do if you were a knitter, uh, there's all your projects that you can write down and they're specifically designed for knitters. So you write down all your knitting projects, what you want to do, what the due date is, who the recipient might be, and then, this is the way I like to do things too, is there's a, like a little matrix. So down the side it has yarns chosen, needle size chosen, tools organized, made block gauge swatch, knitting in progress, ready for finishing, block complete, gifted. So as you're working on each project, you check off sort of what stage you're at. Have you picked the yarn yet? Have you picked your needles yet? Have you organized all your tools? If you've got all those things and you check, 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 then you can see all your projects, which ones you're making progress ones, which ones are lagging behind. So that's a really great way of organizing your projects. I, I really do like that. And then if you need more details about each one of the projects, there's a project page where you can put your swatch, you can put all sorts of things, and a little grid with graph paper for if you are doing some, um, some color work or something like that, lace stitches. Yeah, this is fantastic. And at the back here, there's a whole bunch of reference material for knitting, knitting stitches, increases, decreases, all this kind of stuff. So that is fantastic. And then, oh, there's a little, there's a little pocket here if you want to store loose papers and things. But this is a very nice and sturdy, it's a sturdy looking planner. And I do like the fact that it is ring bound because then you can basically open it up to any, any page and you can just have it lay flat. That is great. So that's the Knitter's Planner. We did that audio podcast about it. You guys can go check it out there. And uh, I believe we're doing a giveaway on the, um, we're doing a giveaway for that. We might do a giveaway for this. <laughs> so yeah, I think we are doing a giveaway for this one too. So if you want to enter the giveaway, you guys can go to our website and you can enter your information in to, uh, I'll put the link down below and you can go and enter your information in there if you'd like to win a copy of the Knitter's Planner as well. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic, it's very hefty, planner. This is something that I would consider to be a desk planner. So I would put this on my desk, do all my planning there. I wouldn't necessarily carry this around in my bag everywhere. It is a little bit heavy. Um, but yeah, this is great for having a good overview, a good plan of, you know, what's coming next, all that kind of stuff. So that's that. So that's the first thing that I was thinking about as like a last minute gift idea, something that you could give to a knitter, something that might be really fun and interesting to them. There are a couple of other things that Sweet Georgia has created this year for holiday kits. These are different from what we've done in the past. And uh, so I wanted to share with you one of these, well, actually both of these projects. So the first one is a project that is called the Skein Trio. And so this is a kit that includes three different colors of uh, sock yarn and we sort of coordinated the colors and these skeins are half skeins, like a half size of a full skein. And then together, these three half skeins produce a shawl, kind of like this one. So here is our ridgeline shawl, okay? And so this is designed with three half skeins of yarn. Because you know sometimes we're making these big shawls and we're using like three full skeins or five full skeins or even seven full skeins of yarn. And it's a lot of yarn and it's a massive shawl. Like it's a long, long project. And so what we thought is like, if you want to have the impact of all of those different colors, but you don't necessarily want to have a ginormous piece of fabric, this is like still a really good sized piece of fabric. It's basically like one and a half skeins of sock yarn and it makes a good sized shawl. Like so. So there's a couple of different boxes. So the color one that I'm wearing right now is this one here and it has Arbutus in here as a sparkly yarn and there's also Shadow which is one of the new fall colors that we have and Cayenne. So that Cayenne is this, this, this color down here. And so they all mix together to make this shawl. 
We also have it in a couple of different color combinations and they all have like some of the new colors and some of our classic core colors. So this one has pine tree, which was a very popular color from our fall collection. Pine tree as a sparkle and it also has ginger and snowfall. So those three together. And this one has rose gold as a sparkle. And in the middle here is mink, which has also been one of our super popular colors, and lady gray. So those three together, I'm trying to get no glare. So a couple of those things. So the half skein uh, yarn sets, these skein trios are up on our website right now, and they are all ready to go. Something else that was new that we wanted to make this year, like we made a bunch of new kinds of things. So yeah, another thing that is new this year is we made um, a bunch of new mini skein sets and we really have been wanting to play with this idea of making different kinds of mini skeins. Like when we first started, we made mini skeins in a few different yarn bases and it was a lot of inventory to manage like because we had so many colorways and so many mini skeins and all different kinds of bases and things like that. It was a lot for us to store and there was no shelving space for them all. So we came down and we just we just make mini skeins, those mini skeins in Tough Love Sock. And so this year for the retreat, we decided to do something um, a little bit special and that was to create a mini skein set that we are calling the Knitter's Delight. So in the Knitter's Delight, the whole point of it is that you get to play with and experience different yarn bases. So in here, there's a whole bunch of different bases. None of them are Tough Love Sock. So there's Cash Lux Fine in here in The Magician. That's this one here. There's Merino Silk Fine. This one, the second one in Moon Face. The third one is Flaxen Silk Fine in Bubble Wand in the middle. And Bulletproof Sock in Starlight. That's this one here. And Cash Lux Spark on the end here in Mermaid. So all of these yarns, they're all fingering weight yarns. They're all basically sock weight, but they're all different from Tough Love Sock because Tough Love Sock is the one that, you know, everybody sort of gravitates to. But there's all of these other ones that have amazing textures and they're different, they're different blends, they're different. They just take the, the color differently and um, we just wanted everybody to have an opportunity to experience them. And so that's what's in The Knitter's Delight. Now, in addition to giving one of these away to each one of our retreat participants this past November, Tabitha also designed a pattern to go with it. And so the pattern is called Genie, and it is a long, skinny scarf that uses this cute little lace pattern to basically go through all of the mini skeins and attach them all together to make one super long skinny scarf. And so a skinny scarf, you can you can wear in a bunch of different ways. Like I even loop it this many times. So there's like four times and then loop it around. Like so. So a skinny scarf is great because it's just a very you know, narrow width, but you go back and forth and you get the opportunity to play with all of these different textures and colors and mix them up and mix them all together. And so the pattern is called Genie. It's available on our website. And um, yeah, these little kits, Knitter's, Knitter's Delight. Yeah, very fun. So this lace is great because it has resting rows. So you do your yarn overs and your decreases and your increases all on one side and then you flip it over and then you just purl across. It's great. This is the copy of the pattern here. So you can see it's very simple instructions, very easy. This would be a great thing if you were just starting lace, if you were just a beginner at lace and wanting to give it a try. This is a really great way to get into it. The, the lace pattern is really, really, really simple. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of knitting and knitting lace, I wanted to share with you guys the project that I was knitting on at the start here. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. So this is the project that I am currently working on. I talked about this before. This project is called the Sailing Sweater. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on how it's been going. Um, this is my work in progress. This is how much I have completed so far. This is basically a sweater that <laughs> I realized after I read the instructions. This is not the whole sweater. This is just the front of the sweater. And so, 
how this sweater is constructed is you start at this end here and you cast on a very narrow uh, set of stitches. You can maybe see like there, that many stitches. And then you start and making this lace pattern, you're increasing, 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 okay? So you're increasing, it looks kind of like a bit of a triangle with the tip cut off, but you're increasing, increasing, increasing until you get to this point here. And then it is worked straight for about 12 inches or so, okay? And then this part, this triangle part, is going to be the sleeve, the front of the sleeve, okay? And then this straight part, from here to here, this straight part, this is the front of your sweater, this is the body. And so I am at the part where I am now decreasing down the other side to form the other front of the sleeve. So one front of the sleeve, and other front of the sleeve. Now, after I finish knitting this panel, I need to knit another panel that is exactly the same and then sew the tops together and sew the bottom of the sleeves together. And so basically, it'll be like a pullover uh, with a boat neck at the top here. I'm very, very excited about it. I think that the colors are working out really nicely. This one is the Arbutus colorway, and I'm using the uh, Mohair Silk DK yarn. Do I have any skeins up here? I might have put them all away. Ah. Here are some of the skeins that are going to be going into the project. This is the Mohair Silk DK and uh, in the Arbutus color, it produces this very highly variegated sort of colorway. And so while I've been knitting this, I have been using two strands. So I'm using two balls at the same time and alternating between them. So I basically knit, knit one row, purl one row, and then go to the next line and then pick up the other ball and then alternate between the two. So really wanting to switch between the two skeins in order to mix and blend the colors a little bit more. And I think it's working out not too bad. It'd be very interesting because that way the color distribution and that variegation will happen vertically and at the same time the lace is happening horizontally. It's mostly a horizontal shaped sweater, but then because the color is draping vertically, maybe it won't look so horizontal. We'll see when it, <laughs> when we finish. So the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is something that I have been working on, or just playing with, really. Like the, 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 yeah, I've been just playing with this idea, but it's an idea of something that I want to work on more in 2020. And last week I was talking about wanting to look at making weft-faced rugs, looking at making weft-faced weaving projects. This is kind of um, along that same line. So using this technique, you can make rugs, you can make uh, household textiles, uh, pillow cases, those kinds of things. But in any case, it's a technique that's called croque brag, and uh, it produces a very distinctive look um, where it, a very graphic look, which is, I think, why it appeals to me. But it's using a three point or three shaft twill and what that means is when you thread your loom, you're going to thread over three shafts and you thread one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. And you would thread that all the way across. And then there are sort of three treadling patterns. So you pick up, you know, shafts one and three, and then uh, two and three, and then one and two, something like that. And so when you do that, then different colors as you're weaving them will become more apparent. So you might weave like one color of color A and then another color of color B and another one of color A or another color B. And so as you're doing this, certain colors will become more prominent and it produces this very graphic pattern. So I have just been playing with this technique by using my handy dandy frame loom here. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here at the bottom. This is sort of like uh, this weft face pattern where weft face meaning all of this yarn that I'm putting in as weft is being packed down and you can't see any of the warp yarn down here. So like in this colorful section, you can't see these white warp threads anymore. It's all 100% being covered by the color. And so you can see, you know, yellow is very prominent in some spots, red is very prominent. You can see these blue dots popping out. So it's a very, very graphic look and it can produce chevrons. You can make an overall design with this, but I'm just practicing and playing with how it all works. So what I did was to basically create these 
string heddles and with just scrap yarn and I color coded them so I could tell which ones are supposed to be which but you can see this the pink ones here are supposed to be shaft two the yellow ones here are supposed to be shaft one these ones are shaft three something like that and so as I'm playing with this I'm using these string heddles to basically which are wrapped around the the warp threads and I just basically pull on them and they create this little mini shed. It's it's very crude, you can see, but it still works, right? So I'm like taking, I just wrap these little strings around the warp threads and then I pull them out and then you can see in there there's a shed is forming. Very crude shed. <laughs> but I did this and with the pink ones I wrapped them around a, uh, a wooden spoon to, to pick them all up at the same time. But this is basically how I've been playing with the idea of doing this weft face cork bag project without yet setting it up on a big massive loom and you know testing it out that way. This way I can see, you know, would I want to do a project with this particular yarn, which happens to be the Superwash Worsted? Would I want to do it at this set, which I think is about four ends per inch? Or would I want it to be a tighter set? Would I want to double up these warp threads? It's just a sample. It's just for playing. And so this is one of the things that I was thinking about. You know, for December, December gets crazy. It's already the first week of December, the first Friday in December, and it's busy. Like it's just concerts and kids things and activities and parties and dinners, and it's all great, but it's like all extra stuff on top of all the other things that you need to do. And so I am never very good about making gifts at Christmas time for people because it's just such an intense time, and I have not had enough forth thought to make the gifts ahead of time. And so a lot of my thinking came out of a comment that I received on that podcast episode where we talked about the Knitter's Planner. And someone had commented and talked about how it was, uh, it was a really good idea when you come to December to try to just do less and how doing less can actually allow you to uh, enjoy the holidays even more. And I thought about that. It just stuck in my mind for many, many days, this idea of doing less. And it's kind of like when I talked about uh, the working with the e-spinner, taking away that need to treadle, I could focus more on the spinning. Like I could focus more on looking and enjoying the actual fiber in my hands because I wasn't concerned about doing the, the treadling. And it seems like a weird analogy to make, but it's just taking things out and uh, not worrying about them so that you can focus on other things that are more important. And so I think it happens also with your knitting and your making and your crafting and all these kinds of things and all the things that you need to make and all the things that we need to spend time creating. I feel like December is a really good time to kind of take a break and take a rest and just play, just experiment. I have, I have no, no preconceived notions that I'm going to finish this. There's no desire for me to, to, to do anything with this, to put this up on my wall. It's, it's not going to be anything. All it is, is an experiment and it's time to play. So I'm really just enjoying doing it. Yeah, so I hope that as you guys are going into this December, that you're preparing for the holiday season, you're preparing to celebrate with your friends or your family, that you take some time to yourself to really just rest and enjoy the things that you have made so far. You can look back at the year and look at all the things that you have made, but really just enjoy this time and uh, not worry so much and stress so much about making things. It's really just about giving yourself some time and space to enjoy. It's advice for me, it's advice for everybody, it's advice for me, really. Just give yourself some time to rest and enjoy. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode where we're just catching up on what's going on with me and what I'm working on and Sweet Georgia and things like that. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you like this episode, please do hit like. And if you would like to see more episodes like this, please do hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and you'll get notified about when new videos like this go up in the future. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye for now.